Hi everyone. Welcome back to Learn with MedNuggets. In today's video, we are going to talk about antibiotics. Antibiotics kill bacteria by working on different parts of the bacterial cell. Let's start with antibiotics that work on the bacterial cell wall. Bacterial cell walls are made up of peptidoglycan. These peptidoglycans cross-link to form the cell wall of bacteria. Peptidoglycans are made up of short peptide chains. D-alanine, D-alanine are the amino acids that make up the terminal portion of this peptide chain. Antibiotics like vancomycin prevents the synthesis of the bacterial cell wall by binding to this portion and preventing peptidoglycan synthesis. Now some bacteria will try to find ways to evade this attack by mutating themselves a little bit. So instead of making D-alanine D-alanine, they will make D-alanine D-lactic acid. Since vancomycin is used to binding to D-alanine D-alanine, they will not recognize this new dipeptide. So they will not bind to it. You can easily remember this by the simple mnemonic, if you lack the dollar, you can't get on the van. Beta-lactam antibiotics such as penicillins, cephalosporins, carbapenems and monobactams, on the other hand, work on the bacterial cell wall by preventing peptidoglycans from cross-linking. From these antibiotics, you need to remember specifically how penicillin G and B work. Penicillin G and B look like D-alanine, D-alanine, so it can bind to the penicillin-binding proteins, which are enzymes that normally help build the bacterial cell wall. Think of penicillin binding proteins as the construction workers of the bacterial cell wall. They take the D-alanine, D-alanine bricks and stack them together to make the bacterial peptidoglycan cell wall. Now imagine penicillin G and V entering the construction site. These antibiotics look like D-alanine, D-alanine bricks, like decoys. So the workers, the penicillin binding proteins, accidentally use the wrong blocks instead of the real ones. This messes up the wall, making it weak. Without a strong cell wall, the bacteria can't survive. Now, some bacteria will try to find ways to evade this attack by mutating themselves a little bit. Mutations in the PBP protein will prevent penicillins from attaching to them and destroying them. Bacteria can also produce beta-lactamase enzymes to degrade the beta-lactam ring of beta-lactam antibiotics. This resistance mechanism is one of the most common ways bacteria evade these drugs. Another thing that you need to remember is that vancomycin binds to the D-alanine, D-alanine portion of peptidoglycan, while penicillin G and V are D-alanine, D-alanine structural analogs that bind to penicillin binding proteins. They are not the same thing. Vancomycin is a drug that is well tolerated in general but not trouble free, as it can cause nephrotoxicity, ototoxicity, thrombophlebitis, and diffuse flushing. A common side effect of vancomycin is the Red Man syndrome or vancomycin infusion reaction. This is characterized by a sudden onset of redness, rash, and flushing of the face, neck, and upper body. It occurs as a reaction to the rapid infusion of vancomycin. The symptoms can include pruritus, urticaria, and hypotension. This reaction can be prevented by slowing down the infusion rate and pretreating with antihistamines. The symptoms typically resolve once the infusion rate is adjusted and it's not usually life-threatening. Dress syndrome is another rare but serious hypersensitivity reaction to vancomycin that exams like to go after. It can present with a rash, fever, swollen lymph nodes, hepatitis and eosinophilia. If this develops, you need to immediately discontinue the drug. Now let's move on to the antibiotics that interfere with protein synthesis. Protein synthesis usually happens in the ribosomes. Bacterial ribosomes are made up of 50S 
and 30S subunits. Some antibiotics act on these subunits to stop bacterial protein synthesis from happening. But don't worry, these antibiotics are not going to affect the protein synthesis happening inside our body as human ribosomes are different from bacterial ribosomes. Our ribosomes are made up of 60S and 40S subunits. You can remember these antibiotics using the mnemonic Take Mac Proteins. T stands for tetracyclines, M is for macrolides, A is for aminoglycosides, C is for clindamycin, and P is protein synthesis, which is what these antibiotics inhibit. Now, just remembering this is not good enough because exams like to go after which subunits these antibiotics act on. Macrolides and clindamycin act on the 50S subunit while the others act on the 30S subunit. You can remember this by thinking of the 50S subunit which is the bigger O macro subunit where M is macrolides and C is clindamycin. Now there's another slightly confusing part I want to discuss in this video which are the names of these antibiotics. As you can see, there are a lot of antibiotics with similar names that inhibit protein synthesis. You can remember the macrolides easily as they all end in thromycin. Clindamycin belongs to the class lincosamides, so it's kind of on its own here. The antibiotics that end with sin, C-I-N, are your aminoglycosides. There are a few important points that you need to remember for your exams. That is, clindamycin can disrupt the natural balance of gut flora, which increases the likelihood of a C. difficile infection. If the infection is severe and causes significant inflammation, it can lead to pseudomembranous colitis and more intense symptoms like severe abdominal pain, fever, and potentially life-threatening complications like toxic megacolon or perforation of the colon. Tetracyclines can lead to photosensitivity and macrolides can cause arrhythmias due to QT interval prolongation. Now let's go through the antibiotics that affect bacterial DNA and RNA synthesis. First off, we have the fluoroquinolones which inhibit DNA replication. They work on enzymes that are involved in DNA replication, such as DNA gyrase and topoisomerase. Metronidazole prevents DNA synthesis by forming toxic free radical metabolites in the bacterial cell that damage DNA. Rifampine inhibits RNA polymerase. Trimethoprim and sulfonamides inhibit folate synthesis. You can remember this easily as the letters T and S are in the words folate synthesis. Sulfonamides act on the first step of folate synthesis, while TMP acts on the final step. Bacteria can acquire resistance to sulfonamides by increasing their production of PABA, which is the substrate that sulfonamides normally inhibit. This extra PABA outcompetes the sulfonamide, effectively bypassing the inhibition. Some important points that are worth remembering for your exams is TMP can cause hyperkalemia at high doses. TMP also treats marrow poorly. It can cause megaloblastic anemia, leukopenia and granulocytopenia. This can be avoided by co-administering TMP with leucovorin. Fluoroquinolones, on the other hand, can cause tendinitis, tendon rupture, and QT prolongation as side effects. And metronidazole can be used in place of amoxicillin when treating HP infections if your patient is allergic to penicillin. It's also important to remember that metronidazole can cause a disulfiram-like reaction with alcohol, which can present with severe flushing, tachycardia, and hypotension. This is a summary of all the antibiotics you need to know for your exams. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.